Finally, we're going to use the double angle formulas to prove another trigonometric identity. We're going to prove that secant of 2x is equal to secant squared x over 2 minus secant squared x. So we're going to start, I think, with the right-hand side because it looks more complicated. The right-hand side, and we'll try to manipulate it into the left-hand side. So let me start with the right-hand side. Secant squared x over 2 minus secant squared x. Again, when you don't know what to do with the trigonometric identity, it's often good, first of all, start with the more complicated side. Secondly, convert everything to sines and cosines. So here I've got a lot of secants. I'm going to convert it to the definition of secant is 1 over cosine. So this is 1 over cosine squared x. And in my denominator, I have 2 minus, again, 1 over cosine squared x. Now I see lots of cosine squareds uh, in the denominator, so I think I'm going to try to clear that by multiplying top and bottom by cosine squared x. And so on the top, I'll just get 1. On the bottom, I get 2 cosine squared x minus, well, now the cosine squareds cancel, so minus 1. But look at that, 2 cosine squared x minus 1. That is one of the formulas that I remember for cosine of 2x. So this is 1 over cosine of 2x. But now let's remember the definition, by definition, 1 over cosine is exactly the same as secant. So this is secant of 2x, and that's the left-hand side of the identity that we were trying to prove. So we've proved it. We started with the right-hand side. We derived the left-hand side. The key things to notice in there, the way it worked, was first of all, the right-hand side's a little more complicated, so we're going to go to work on that one. Uh, when I see a bunch of secants, I'll try to convert it into sines and cosines because I know how to manipulate sines and cosines. I've got more formulas for them than for secants and tangents and cosecants and cotangents. So I convert it into sines and cosines. I see some cosines in the denominator. I decide to multiply by cosine squared x to clear away those denominators. So I multiply that through. And then there's really some pattern recognition here, knowing your, your uh, identity formulas. So when I see that cosine, 2 cosine squared x minus 1, a little bell goes off in my head. Wait, I've seen that somewhere before. Oh yeah, that's equal to cosine of 2x. So now I've got 1 over cosine of 2x. That's by definition secant of 2x. And so I've converted it, converted it into the left-hand side. So that's how you can use the double angle identities to prove more complicated trigonometric identities. So that's the end of our lecture on double angle identities. These are the trigonometry lectures for educator.com.